Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of the body and blood of Christ. If you are with us on Zoom, please remain muted during the service, except when we pray the Lord's Prayer and exchange peace with one another. The first and second readings today each present scenes of bread blessed and broken. It is one of the greatest aspects of our faith that the central symbol of community is sharing a meal and a meal as simple and universal as bread. From ancient times to today, blessing and sharing bread is an act that continues to unite us. Please stand and join our gathering song. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Nourished by God in word and sacrament, we take a moment to recall the times that we have failed to follow Christ's example in our lives and ask for peace healing and the abundant forgiveness of God. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you feed us with yourself. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, the food that you give never leaves us wanting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of
Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, and being a priest of God Most High, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed unto you, 
that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions for we are in a deserted place here. Jesus said to them, give them some food yourselves. And they replied, five loaves and two fish are all that we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. And then he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then, taking the loaves and the two fish, Jesus looked up to heaven. He said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Jesus. Two theologians were having a conversation. One of them was a Catholic and one of them was Protestant. The Catholic theologian started to kind of complain about the Catholic people that they seem to be slow to be uh, uh, absorbing the transformation uh, that the teachings of the church and, uh, offered to them. And they had complained for a while about Catholics. And this is the Catholic theologian complaining for a while about Catholics. And finally, the Protestant theologian said, now wait a second. He said, you Catholics go to mass all the time. You're going to mass daily. You're going to mass every week, week after week, year after year. And he said to the Catholic priest, he said, don't underestimate the effect of all those Eucharists. 
Don't underestimate the effect that all those Eucharists are having on the hearts and the minds of Catholic people. Don't underestimate all of those Eucharists. And I think that's exactly where we are today as we celebrate the body and the blood of Christ, because we can underestimate how much effect all those Eucharists are having on, on us. We can underestimate them ourselves because we are called to become, we are St. Ignatius or St. Augustine, when he was giving communion to people, he used to say the body of Christ, but sometimes he would say, receive what you are, receive what you are, receive what you are. You are the body of Christ. And we can get sort of really, I don't feel like the body of Christ. I, you know, maybe I made three steps towards that the other day, but I, maybe I took a couple steps back and we can feel like, well, we can underestimate the effect that all these Eucharists are having on us. But what is the effect they're having on us? It's far more than we think because what they do is we're not just celebrating a ritual here. We're celebrating the pattern of our life. And so when we go out the door, we live a Eucharistic life. Our job is not just to celebrate the, the ritual of the Eucharist, which is wonderful and holy and, and a great gift from God that we're incredibly grateful for. But when we celebrate it over and over, and we don't underestimate the effect it's having on us, we realize that it's getting us to live a Eucharistic life. It's not the Eucharist isn't just what we do here. We live a Eucharistic life. It's transforming us to live the Eucharist when we leave here. In our gospel, we have the four great uh, Eucharistic actions that are at the, at the center of every mass. What Jesus does there in the gospel is he takes the bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it. And isn't that exactly the cornerstone that every mass is, is built upon? We take the bread, we bless it, we break it, and we give it and share it. And so what Jesus is doing in the gospel, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're doing here. Those four great Eucharistic actions, but they're also what not only transform the bread and wine here in this ritual, they are what transform our lives to live a Eucharistic life. So God, first of all, takes us. We don't, first of all, give ourselves to God. We can't give our God and tell our lives to God unless, first of all, God has taken us. We don't get to take the first move with God. God always is way ahead of us and takes the first move. God gives us the a desire to give ourselves to God. And then we go along with that, but we didn't decide to have this desire in the first place. That came for, in the first place, God made the first move. When I was, uh, I wasn't raised Catholic. Uh, and so at 35, I converted to Catholicism. And uh, I started to notice, uh, you know, going to mass, I started to notice those, there were two young priests, Peter and Paul, at my uh, Jesuit priest at the parish where I was. And I started to look at them and I started to think, well, you know, that doesn't look too bad what those guys are doing. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. I mean, it seems crazy, but I wonder if, I wonder if I should think about being a priest. So I went to one of those diocesan retreats where you're supposed to, you know, all the young guys are there and we're all supposed to be doing this. And they told us to make a decision tree. So I went home and I made my decision tree. So on the one line, one, go, one column, all the advantages of saying yes to becoming a priest and all, and then the other call them all the disadvantages to saying yes. So I started with the advantages. Uh, I got to number three. Well, uh, gee, I was expecting more. That, okay, but three. And then I went to the disadvantages. Filled the whole page, every single line down. This, oh, yeah, that's a problem. Mm, that's a problem. No, that, no, that doesn't look good. No, Fill the whole page, the whole column of disadvantages. So I wadded up that piece of paper and threw it in the basket. And I said to myself, I remember saying it quite clearly to myself, I don't have to look at that again. That's over. I will be a good Catholic sitting in the pews. I don't need to be up in front of anybody. I will be a good Catholic sitting in the pews and I don't need to go to any more of those retreats. And I don't need to think about this anymore. It's over. Two weeks later, I applied to the Jesuits. 
And so I didn't give myself to the call to the, I got taken. First of all, God touched my life and said, I'll put a desire in you. It doesn't come from you. It comes from a love you don't own. It comes from a love that is a gift from God. And it will take you. And then you'll be able to give yourself to God. But first of all, I'm going to make the first move. It won't be your first move. I will be the one who makes the first move. And that is the way that God takes all of our lives. It doesn't have to be such a, it doesn't have to be a big thing about a calling for the rest of our life. It can be every single day. God has given us a love in our hearts that moves us. First of all, we don't decide to have it. We decide, we decide to pay attention to it and to cooperate with it. God takes our lives, first of all. And then we give ourselves to God because we've already been taken by God. And so God takes us. God takes the bread. He takes us. He blesses the bread. In our gospel, Jesus tells his disciples, you know, they, first of all, you know, they're just like us. They said, you know, get rid of these people. <laughs> you dismiss them. Somebody else needs to feed them. Somebody else needs to solve this problem. It ain't going to be us. And then Jesus says, oh, no, no, <laughs> no. I'm taking you and I'm teaching you and telling you, you are going to feed them. You've been fed. You've been cared for. And now you are going to feed them. And what do, they, what do they say? The first thing, they, exactly what we say, well, Jesus, there's really not enough. I mean, it's impossible. It's impossible. We got a couple of bread and we got a couple of fish and there's, 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 this, there's no way. It's a nice thing to be called by you, but, you know, it's impossible. And then Jesus says, oh, no, it's not about you. Bring it. Bring what you have. Bring the little bit that you have and I will bless it. And that's, of course, exactly with our own lives. When God puts his hand upon our lives and calls us to do something, we almost always say, not me. You know, maybe, could you get Leaf to do that? Or, you know, sister's a good Christian. Could you get her to do that? But not me. And then, well, okay, it is me. But you know what? I really can't do this. I just don't have enough. Sorry, I can't do it. And God says, oh, no, no, I've taken you, and now I will bless you. And what you do will be enough. It's not about you being enough. You'll never be enough. It's about my blessing that will make you enough. And so Jesus takes the bread as he takes us, he takes our lives. He blesses us, and he breaks us open. He breaks the bread. Why do we break the bread? Why do we have uh, a big round piece of bread that we break at the mass? Why don't we just break it up before we get here? It'd be a lot easier. Why is it I have to hold that up and break that and then show you that I'm breaking it? And the reason is, is if you don't break the bread, you can't share the bread. It can't be shared with anybody. It's gotta be broken. And that's what Jesus does with our lives. When he takes us and blesses us, he breaks us open. He breaks our hearts open. He breaks our heart. He uses something in this world to break our, to break our hearts open so that we then have, we can be given, we can share. The young man and the young woman fell in love. And uh, she eventually said to him, she said, all right. She said, listen up. I'm giving you your track shoes. You had better put those track shoes on and you had better run out of here as fast as you can. And she said, I'm just letting you know, I'm warning you. I have a lot of needs. I'm a needy person, I have a lot of needs. And, I, and if we fall any more in love, then life is gonna get a lot harder for you, not a lot easier. If we fall more in love and we vow that love to one another, your life's going to get a lot harder. And so you better put those track shoes on and you better run now as fast as you can. And the young man says, I'm staying. His heart had been broken open. He had fallen in love. 
and his, he had been broken open, his heart had been open. And so what does God use to break our hearts open? Sometimes, normally, probably most of the time, it's when we fall in love. In that first time in our lives when we fall in love and we get beyond ourselves, we get outside of ourselves, and we can then begin to be a person who shares. Because it's not about us anymore. It's not my consciousness is not just about I, it's now about us and we. And we move outside of ourselves. Because something in us has broken our hearts and minds open. And sometimes it's great suffering that comes into our lives. And God uses it to break open our hearts so that we can care for others. And, you know, the suffering of some people is just unimaginable sometimes. And yet, almost everybody who's been through great suffering, their heart is broken open, then they become more loving, not less loving. There's a time, there's a, there's a minority of people who have suffered, and so they become victimizers and abusers of others that make others suffer. But most people who suffer, it breaks them open. And now they're more sensitive and caring to the suffering of others. Now their heart's been broken open and they can care for people who suffer in a way that they never could before because they know what it's like. God takes our lives, he blesses them, he breaks them open with great joy, great love, great suffering. He uses what the world brings to us to break us open. And then he gives, we give, we share what we have. And like the disciples, we thought there wouldn't be enough. And it turns out everybody is satisfied and there's 12 baskets left over. There's more than enough because we got blessed by God. There's more than we thought that we could ever do. There's more that God could do through us. We thought the work was all our work. We thought we were working so hard. And it turns out it was mostly the work of God. And that's why there's 12 baskets left over. The abundance of God's grace working through us that we didn't know about or have any control over. And so we're not just celebrating a ritual here. We're celebrating an incredibly beautiful ritual and we're grateful for the gift of it on this day. But what we do up here is what God is doing in our lives. We are being transformed to live a Eucharistic life in which we're always, we're so open to God that God can take us and bless us and break our lives open and give and share with the gifts that we have that have been multiplied by his grace, we live a Eucharistic life. That's one of the reasons we do this over and over and over and over again is, to, is because it transforms us to be the same thing that we're doing here. And we become the body of Christ for the world. And so we shouldn't underestimate all these Eucharists, what it does to our hearts and our minds. And I know it's easy to do. I know it's easy to get discouraged about it all and say, well, you know, I just don't see the transformation in my life. I, this is supposed to trans. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't see it. It's so slow. Can't God go any faster and changing my heart and mind and transforming me into a better person, a more loving person? And yet, it happens slowly. It happens Eucharist after Eucharist, day after day, week after week, year after year, decade after decade. We come back and we celebrate the Eucharist and more and more and more we become the Eucharist. More and more and more we become the body of Christ that has been taken, blessed, broken, and feeding and sharing and giving to the world. And it's that transformation piece by piece bit by bit, Sunday by Sunday by Sunday by Sunday. And it transforms us, though. That's the power. It has a power that transforms us. And so let's come to the Eucharist. Let's come to the Eucharistic table. And let's, uh, let's not underestimate the effect that all these Eucharists have been having on our hearts. 
and have the effect that they will have on our hearts. Let's come here and let, why did you get here this morning? You got here this morning because God took you and put a desire in your heart to be here, or you wouldn't be here. You've already been taken by God and brought here. We all have. We've been blessed by God. God's using our loves and our sufferings to break us open so that we can give more freely, more generously. And he's using us. He's calling us and using us to feed the world, to share with the needs of the world, to be the body of Christ among people. So let's come to this Eucharistic table and let's not make the mistake of underestimating all these Eucharists and how they are transforming us into the body of Christ. Let us stand and bring our prayer and declare our faith to the Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and of earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Lord Jesus, you give of yourself to us, sustaining us and giving us life. And so confident in this, we raise our prayers to you, knowing you will hear and you will answer them. Our response is, hear our prayer. That all members of the church might better recognize and embrace the communal element of Christ's body and blood in the Eucharist. Jesus, bread of life. Hear our prayer. That leaders of cities and nations work to ensure all people have access to healthy food, clean water, and a safe environment. Jesus, bread of life. Hear our prayer. That with the strength of the body and blood of Jesus, we move forward for peace, continuing to raise our voice against violence, poverty, injustice, and division in our world. Jesus, bread of life. Hear our prayer. That the power of the Eucharist, Eucharistic celebration inspires priests and those discerning a vocation to the priesthood to deeper prayer and reflection on the meaning of the sacrament. Jesus, bread of life. Hear our prayer. That a spirit of prayer and a devotion to the Eucharist support the lives of fathers, grandfathers, stepfathers, and anyone in a fathering role. Jesus, bread of life. Hear our prayer. Remembering Juneteenth, the day in which the slaves in Texas finally heard of their emancipation. We pray to work toward an end to all slavery, racism, voter suppression, greed, hate, violence, poverty, denial of health care, and environmental injustice. Jesus, bread of life. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. Nourish us, O oh God so that we can align all that we do in the world with all that you do in the world. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.
of your presence in this place. Here for you, God, we are here for you. As the gifts we bring become a feast of praise, we are drawn. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings here presented through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that, sac that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all of the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs>
therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand that you reach out to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned far away from you on account of our sins, it is you who brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might also love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation that Christ has brought to us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of, our, of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took the bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, and confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and the resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love for us, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us already, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. And Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son. And in this saving banquet, may you graciously endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. And may he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, with Alexander, our Bishop, with all of the bishops and your entire people everywhere that your son has gained for you. And just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together again with the glorious Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with your blessed apostles, with St. Charles, and with all of the saints, but also with all of our brothers and our sisters and those of every race and every language who have died in your friendship, bring us to share along with them the ending banquet of unity and a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Invite those at home to unmute at this time. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us, us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power Our and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not upon our sins, look instead upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. Hi. Hi. Everybody. Hi, Kathy. And I are, oh, hi. Samantha. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age, by which, uh, by our reception in your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Please be seated for our announcements. Be sure to pick up a bulletin on your way out. There are several important news items in this week's bulletin. Your financial contributions are welcomed and appreciated. You can place them in the donation box at the back of the church. In recognition of Father's Day, there will be no hospitality in the commons after mass today. <laughs> Enjoy your afternoon. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Sister Phyllis, and I have the privilege of working with the altar servers and the cross bearers. So I'm asking today if there's any young people from fourth grade through high school, or if you know of anyone who wants to be servers. So please have them see me after mass so I can get their names because sometimes I forget who they are. And there is a training for all altar servers and cross bearers next Sunday after mass. That's June 26th. So all current and new servers and cross bearers come to this training. And I want to thank all of our servers for their service to our community. It has been a blessing for me to work with them all. Thank you. Amen. Good morning. I am Sandy Bossom, uh, current chair of the Administrative Council. The Administrative Council and LEAF want to apprise you of an issue with our church heating system. We learned last winter that two of the four furnaces, furnace units that heat the church need to be replaced. To address this problem, we have consulted with our longtime HVAC maintenance contractor and with the property management of the archdiocese. We obtained two competitive bids for the job. Both were nearly identical in scope and price. The cost will be approximately $110,000.
we investigated the more environmentally friendly heat pump solution, but learned that it would be prohibitive, expensive, and time consuming. Along with the pastoral council, we have consulted with our current priest administrator, Father Jerry, and with our soon to be pastor, Father Tony Galati. All recognize that this is a necessary project. So our intention is to sign a contract with Heinz Mechanical for the work. The contract is currently under review by the Risk Management Office of the Archdiocese. Once they review, review the payment, once they review it is complete, the contract will be signed and an initial payment of $40,000 will be made. Due to the supply chain challenges, obtaining the necessary equipment will take 12 to 14 weeks. So actual work won't occur until fall. Of course, we will need to dip into our savings, which is approximately $340,000 to pay for this project. But this is what our savings is for, planned and unplanned expenses. We welcome your comments and questions. Talk to Leif, myself, or anyone on the Administrative Council, Dave Pierce, Barbara Kipas, Barbara Schultz, Angie McKinney, and Steve Moore. Thank you. Don't you love good news? <laughs> um, I want to apologize to Michael, who had to actually read the announcements that I write. And uh, so um, maybe I should have said in lieu of Father's Day or because we know you're going to go off and do something else for Father's Day. We're not having hospitality in the I, in recognition was wrong. However, <laughs> Uh, to make amends, we do have a little bit of hospitality uh, today. Uh, I have made some coffee and some juice and there's some cookies and it's all in the office. So if you're not on your way out, um, stick around and uh, have a cup of coffee, it's, it's there. And if it runs out, I can make some more. Um, I also wanted to let you know to follow up the announcement I gave last week about uh, addressing uh, our response to the issue of gun violence in our culture these days. Uh, a group of us did meet last week and we, we talked about some options for a, uh, some kind of a gathered uh, program for learning and conversation and discussion. That is still in the works. We circled the airport for a while, but we never landed. Uh, so we... <clears throat> So we have to do more work on that. But it, in the meantime, we have created a, um, a, a growth learning opportunity uh, on our website that has a host of um, information pieces, prayer pieces, response pieces uh, to this issue. And uh, I set it up uh, in the same way that I um, did last year where you could explore a particular topic in a growth learning plan, do a little bit of learning and click on uh, the item that says badge and you earn a digital badge uh, for your effort. And uh, uh, $10 gets donated uh, to uh, the Parish Faith Formation Programming. So, <clears throat> uh, I invite you to take a look at that. You'll, you can navigate your way there. If you, make your, if you find yourself on the very front page of our website, right in the middle, you can click on a, on a button that, that takes you to that growth learning plan. So um, take a look at that. And if you haven't yet uh, had the opportunity but would like to sign the pledge for uh, initiative petition 17, I think Margaret, uh, uh, you can see Margaret Retz here. She has her, her clipboard there for you. Finally, uh, next weekend uh, is uh, Father Jerry's last uh, weekend with us. We have blessed him. We have celebrated him. We have gifted him. But 
if you, um, well, I just encourage you to be with us next weekend so that we can send him off well. Thanks. I want to say a special congratulations to all of our black brothers and sisters on this Juneteenth. Juneteenth, a celebration of emancipation and freedom. And we want to say congratulations to you. But this is also, of course, Father's Day. And so we also want to bless or give our fathers a special blessing. Fathers, I think every father knows that the father's job is to guard the boundaries of the family. Is to guard the boundaries and protect the mother and the children and then provide for them. And it's an incredible job, a difficult job that requires love, requires love and bravery and courage. And so we would like to bless our fathers now. There's all kinds of ways to be a father. You can be a stepfather, you can be a you can be a biological father, you can be an adopted father, you could be someone who has given a father's love to someone who doesn't have a father. You protected the boundaries around them and cared for them and provided for them. And so all of those who have been fathers in whatever way, I invite you all to stand now. And I know fathers don't like to do this. So come on, get up. Stop. Oh, don't be shy. And now we are going to give you a special blessing. Could I have a server help me, please? Let's extend our hands to our, bless, to our fathers and blessing. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and their love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and their daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. stand. The Lord be with you. With your May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. go forth in peace the Mass is ended. Oh, my.